In this unit, I'm going to talk you through all the parameters in the Edit Assembly panel for stacked walls. And then in the next unit, we're actually going to build up a new stacked wall type from scratch. So you can actually see those put into practice. So here's a sample stacked wall type. I'm going to select an instance. Hit Edit Type. Here's our type parameters. Remember, we've only got this one parameter, which is the edit button, which gets us through to the edit assembly panel. And here it is. So let's just review each of these controls in turn. So starting at the top, some basic information. The family, it is a stacked wall, a system family. The type, whatever you choose to name your new type, that will appear there. Now, offset. If you look over at the preview on the left-hand side, if you imagine there is a vertical line running consistently up the height of the stacked wall and you can offset any of your subwall elements positively or negatively left and right away from that reference line that's what that refers to now if we just hit the drop down and have a look at the options here so wall center line the core center line and the finish face interior and exterior and core face interior and exterior so you'll be familiar with these from earlier units in the course so for example you could pick wall center line as the reference for the overall stacked wall and then for each of your sub walls you can specify how they relate to that wall center line common reference so that's what that offset parameter there is for Moving down, we have the layer list. This is where you actually specify the buildup of your stacked wall. So the bottom of the list represents the base, and conversely, the top is the top of your stacked wall. Here are the sub walls currently loaded in this particular type, and it's just a case of using insert to add additional ones in. You can see there that wall, it's actually inherited the type from below, so you can obviously go and change your sub wall to a different wall type. Now just note the wall types that you can actually use for sub walls are from your basic wall groups. You can't use curtain walls. So any wall types that you've created as a basic wall type will appear in this list and be available for you to add as a sub wall. Obviously you can delete layers that you don't need if you've copied an existing stacked wall type and you're adapting it and you can change the order of your layers vertically by selecting the layer in question and simply using the up or down to put it in the right position. Now if you look at the sub walls in this particular example you'll notice the top one there has variable as an entry in this height column. Now for all stacked wall types you need to specify one of your sub walls to have a variable height and that is because when these stacked walls are used in a real project they need to be able to adjust dynamically to changes in level so you need to be able to attach or constrain the top and the base to levels and have this wall stretch up or down accordingly if those levels move now obviously if all your sub walls in this definition all had finite fixed heights the wall wouldn't be able to stretch or shrink vertically so one of the sub walls needs to be variable and you can only specify one if you had let's say this top element as a variable height wall and this one here as a variable height when you stretched it by moving your level heights in a project how would Revit know um, whether this top element was to take up all that, that extra height or it was split equally between the two. So quite simply, no matter how many sub walls build up your stacked wall definition, just one of them is designated as variable and that is the one that's going to change in height should the wall flex up or down when it's constrained by levels. If we look at this next column offset, well, now we mentioned the offset reference line before here. So let's just go through that now. So currently the general offset for the whole assembly is set to wall center line. So if you imagine a reference line going down the, the center of the whole assembly, then 
our new layer that we've added sits 127.5mm to the left or proud of that reference line. Let's go and put some extreme example in there, 800 just to show the effect of that. Hit OK and there it is. Just go back into the edit assembly panel. So I put an extreme value in there just to, to make it very clear what that does. So that value, if it's a positive number, will move your individual sub wall forward towards the exterior in relation to whatever plane you've chosen as the offset reference line. Conversely, set a negative value if you need it to move backwards towards the inside of the wall. Now the next two columns are simply labelled top and base. They actually refer to the top and base extension distances if enabled for your sub walls. Now you'll recall from an earlier unit in the course where we talked about top and base extension distances for walls. So I'm just zooming in on this particular sub wall as an example. If we just forget the sweep for now, so here is our sub wall. That's obviously made up of a number of layers. Now you'll recall from the earlier unit where we said that we could actually unlock some of these layers and extend them above the general top of the wall, the same at the base. So we could unlock a particular layer and extend it by a finite distance below the base of the wall. So if your stacked wall includes sub walls that have these layers unlocked, these then become available for you to specify that distance that those layers should oversail or undercut the general height of the wall by. So if for example we wanted this layer in this sub wall to extend past the general height of the top of it, the rest of its layers, by let's say 150 mil, we would have to go back into the structure for this sub wall. So we go back into the basic wall group, we'd find this wall type, we'd go and edit its structure, we'd unlock the layer, we would specify the finite distance we want that layer to oversail the general height for the wall. Then when we come back into our stacked wall definition, we would actually see that finite distance specified either for the top or the base depending on where we specified it here, either the top of the wall or down from the base of it. And the final column in our table is labelled flip and it simply gives us the ability to flip or hand over any of the sub wall elements in our stacked wall. So for example if we take the section with the sweep on up here and hit flip it simply hands it over. So by default all the walls are facing the same way with reference to their exterior face and their interior face. However you can flip individual sub walls over just by putting the tick box on in the flip column. This is a sample video from the Ultimate Guide to Autodesk Revit Walls online course. For full details of this course please visit bimscape.com